What does the central theme of The Rise of Skywalker, and maybe the sequel trilogy as a whole? I will be talking about The Rise of Skywalker, so if you don't want to be spoiled, please put this video in your watch later playlist and come back. That's the best advice I can give. But what does the film sing? What is its central message? I've already done a video about Rey's story, but I'm talking about the story as a whole involving both Rey and Kylo, or should I say Ben. So glad I, I'm so glad I bent them to the code. I was counting on it. I really hoped for it. But what is it saying? Well, what I interpreted the central message to be is confronting fear. And Palpatine is the physical representation of fear. And Ray has to confront it. And Ben is there to help her along. But probably a good way is to put this in context in the other or in the, the Skywalkers of the Skywalker Saga. Anakin, he struggled with fear, fear of loss. He feared the loss of his mother, and when he did, he slaughtered the Tusken Raiders, the men, the women, the children, like animals. Then we, and, he and his struggle and his fear of loss of Padme drives him to the dark side. He literally, his fear controls him. He does not confront it, he does not learn to deal with it. He lets his fear, con his fear guide his actions. His fear controls him. Then we got Luke in the original trilogy. He he is more emotionally mature than Anakin. He may be a bit whiny, and he does carry that I think through the rest of his life. But he he is more emotionally mature than Anakin in many regards. But he still has fear. His fear is more, I think, connected to fear of failure rather than fear of loss or anything, but fear of failure. Let's remember, the, the, let's, and, yeah, let's go to Dagobah, that's where we get this from. First, we get the dark side cave. He confronts a vision of Vader, knocks off the helmet, helmet explodes, it's his face. He f his fear of failure, his fear of becoming like Vader, the man who he believes killed his father. It's that fear of failure. Then he needs to lift the, the X-Wing out of the swamps of Dagobah in order to leave. He says it's too big and Yoda says size matters not. And Luke tries and fails. And he said, and he tells Yoda and he, that he, you know, he can't do it, it's too heavy. And then Yoda does it nearly effortlessly. Uh, maybe a little con definitely concentrating, but could do it. And Luke says that, you know, basically is like, I think, that's impossible. He doubts it. He, and Yoda, and they like, couldn't have been done. And Yoda responds, that is why you fail. He failed to succeed because he feared to f fail. His fear of failure is what we see in Luke Zero. And we see this again throughout throughout his story. And we do get kind of a break from that, I think, when he goes to Cloud City and when he confronts Vader on on the Death Star 2 with the Emperor. He kind of has overcome his initial fears, his fear of failure, but it's still there. He has to deal with that fear, but it's not present for him. He doesn't to succeed, he doesn't need to do it. He just needs to know not to give in to the dark side. But what happens happens in the secret trilogy? Well, we find out that momentary fear caused him to ignite his lightsaber above Ben because he sensed the dark side and that caused Ben to freak out. Understandably, your mentor and uncle is hold is standing above you with a lightsaber and basically a laser sword. Hmm, I think I will freak out too. Ben's reaction is understandable. And his... Luke's fear in that case drives Ben to the dark side. To the arms of Snoke, if you will. And what does Luke do? He exiles himself on Acto. He sinks his X-Wing in the sea of Acto so he can never, ever leave. He feels that if he comes out, he'll mess up and fail again and cause even worse problems this time. That is what we see in Luke in the sequel trilogy. He's, he has to finally overcome his fears of failure. He does. 
he does. He gives his life forward by force projecting himself from Akto to Crate to give the resistance time to escape. He has all, he's basically like, you know what? Maybe I can do this. I can succeed. And he does. And then the Force Awakens, and that's Force Awakens, sorry, the Rise of Skywalker, we get it confirmed. He tells Ray that the duty of a Jedi is to confront fear, not run from it as he did, or give into it as his father did, but to confront it. And think of that. Anakin gave into fear. Luke ran from fear. Ray confronts fear. But before she does that, she, written, she sees the four skulls of Luke raise his X-Wing out of the seas of Acto. And I swear, they did the shot for us, the audience, because it cuts to Luke's face and he kind of like smiles. Maybe he winks, I don't remember. He clearly like gives the audience a look like, I did it this time. I've overcome why I failed last time. And that's because he no longer feels failure. Failure. He's no longer running from his fears. Ray. Actually, we talk, should we talk about Ben? He wrestles with his fear. Fears, you know, fears of... He is probably the most complex person, and I can only describe his struggle with fear as wrestling with it. He's not... He's not confronting it. He's not giving into it. He's not running away from it. It's like he doesn't know what to do with his fear. Until his mother reaches out to him, and then he's like... He calms down, and his fears disappear. He's basically, his fears no longer have hold over him, for lack of a better term. No, maybe he's, he's, he has no given into his fear, he, like Anakin did. He's not running away from his fear. He really hasn't confronted it, but he's calm. Actually, he has confronted his fears by calming down and thinking, and not acting on his, on his raw emotions, for lack of a better term. And and then he has this scene with the memory of his father where he literally redoes the scene from The Force Awakens and makes the right choices this time. And why? He's no longer wrestling his, with his fear. He knows where he stands in relation to them. Rey is, is the culmination of all this. She, in the, Force, in the Force Awakens, she wants to go back to Jakku where she's safe, her little bubble. She wants to go back into her comfort zone because she has no fear there. She wants to run from her fear, basically, but that won't work. And then, of course, she always has the temptation to give in to fear, which she nearly does. I would say that in The Last Jedi was her wrestling with her fear like Kylo does. She calmed down, I think, by the time of the, the Rise of Skywalker, but then she saw that curveball, and she, and she could easily give in to her fear and let it control her. And eventually she decides that what she needs to do is confront fear. By confronting Palpatine, she is confronting fear. Palpatine is the embodiment of fear in this trilogy. Maybe even the entire saga, but definitely in this trilogy. The Sith represent fear, for lack of a better term. Rey confronts fear. She does not give in to it. She does not run from it. She confronts it. Now, she also doesn't strike fear down herself. She lets fear destroy itself. She lets Palpatine destroy himself. If Anakin had not given in to his fear, Palpatine would have been his own undoing. And just think of that. Anakin gave in to his fear and failed to destroy the Sith. He failed to bring balance to the Force, cos the cosmic Force. He may have brought a more literal balance to the Force, but he failed ultimately because he gave in to his fear and let it control him. Luke made him realize his mistake and he was like, I can sit salvage this. But he didn't do it correctly because fear, the only thing to stop fear is fear itself. Let's bring in FDR. The only thing we have to feel is feel itself. Therefore, the only thing to stop feel is feel by that logic. And that's what we see in The Rise of Skywalker. You have to confront your fear. You have to be fearful of your fear, yes, but you can't ignore it. You got to deal with it. 
Basically, you need to have emotional maturity. You can't run from it. You got to confront it. No matter what. And that's what Ray does. She confronts fear. The only thing she has to feel, well, is fear itself. She does, and she lets the fear be the thing that is its own undoing. And just to bring in the to Star Trek, there's, there's an episode of Star Trek Voyager where they encounter an embodiment of fear themselves. And the fear has its own fears as well. And of course they quote FDR, the only thing I have to fear is fear itself. But basically the idea is that fear is healthy, fear is good, but you can't let it run a, a monk. You got to give, it's a little bit of give and take. How does this, and ultimately they are able to confront fear and win and discover that fear has the fear of being lonely, which is actually kind of interesting. But yeah, fear is the, a healthy emotion, but the only thing you have to feel is fear itself. And bringing that back to Star Wars, what we get out of this all is that, yeah, fear is okay to have, but you don't want it to control you, and you don't want to run from it. You need to confront it. That's what they did in that episode of Star Trek Voyager. That's what Ray did in The Rise of Skywalker. She confronted fear. She didn't let it control her, and she didn't run from it. She confronted it. And that's the central message of the sequel trilogy, and specifically the rise of Skywalker, but it's the confrontation of fear rather than the running from it or the giving into it. Let's remember, Yoda does say that fear is, um, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, um, hate leads to suffering, basically all those things lead to the dark side of the force, and that is true. When you give in, or when you give in to the fear, definitely, and when you run from fear, you give the dark side more power and they can grow. But when you confront it, you stop it. You deal with it. You don't let it control you and you don't run from it. You deal with it. This is, I think this would be very helpful to those who are dealing or who are dealing with emotional health issues, mental health issues. But I'm not the best to speak on that, so I won't. But I think there's definitely a message you can draw from there. But ultimately, fear should be confronted. Not run from, not given into. You just need to, you need to learn to deal with it and accept it. But you can't let it control you and you can't run from it. It's always going to be there. And let's think of the Jedi who have become false ghosts. Qui-Gon. Okay, we haven't seen him physically yet, but it is confirmed in from a certain point of view that he learns how to manifest himself physically. Obi-Wan, Yoda, Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, Leia. What do they all have in common? They've confronted fear. They've learned to deal with their fear healthily, in a healthy manner. Well, we don't know all of Qui-Gon's story, but we can presume... He did so. He let the force guide him. Guide him. Obi Wan learns to to deal with his fears as well throughout his entire story. And actually, I hope the Kenobi trilogy now is actually him finally learning the final lessons about confronting his fear. In the in the Yoda episodes of the Lost Mission se ep season of the Clone Wars season six, have him learning to confront his fear rather than suppress it, ignoring it, or giving in to it. Ignoring it is like running from it. You give it more power in the shadows than you would. You allow the dark side to rise. Luke learns that, as I already shown, and Anakin, as I already shown. Leia, well, we can presume it's like Qui-Gon. It all occurred off-screen. And then, Rey, well, we don't see her as a force ghost. She will be coming for ghost because she's embraced the light side and learned that fear needs to, you can't ignore or hide from fear, you can't run from it, and you can't let it control you. You just have to confront it. So I think Ray will become a force ghost. And while we never saw Kylo as a force ghost, or I should say Ben, which I wish we had and had in the end, he can be a force ghost most Definitely, because he's learned to confront and deal with his fears rather than giving in to them or running for them or simply just wrestling them as I 
can best describe how he treated his fears in the sequel trilogy. But that is the message of the sequel trilogy, specifically the Rise of Skywalker, but we definitely see this throughout the entire saga. Confront fear. Do not give in to it. Do not run from it. Do not hide from it. Do not suppress it. Confront it and learn to live with it healthy. Which I think is something we all need to take in real life. We have to live with fear, yes. But we have to learn to live with it in a healthy manner. And this can apply to every aspect of our lives. So thank you for staying with me for this video. I hope this might have helped clear up some of your questions you did have about the Rise of Skywalker, about the message and all that. I hope I helped you there. But let me know what you saw this down in the description. I would love to hear from you. There's also the like button nearby. And of course, there's all the links, websites, social media, Discord, Patreon. Check them all out, please. And as always, have a good day, a good night, wherever you are. May the Force be with you, always.